What up, everybody? It's the Rap Throwback. Yo, yo. Your boy, Diz Megatron here. Soundwave up in the house. We back in at episode number 50. Damn, number 50. It's number 50. This is the Nottis End of the World episode. Damn. All right, cool. Yeah, pretty crazy, huh? So, a couple of things, man. We got our new site up and running. Uh... It's got all the archives of uh, all of our episodes and shit. Check it out at wrapthrowback.com. Um, you know, you can leave us a voicemail on there. We'll put you on the podcast oh, if yeah. you want. That'd be That'd dope. Be dope. I'll leave a message. Yeah. You know, get at us on the Twitter. It's uh, rap underscore throwback on the Twitter. And uh, shit, man. We'll just keep doing this shit. Give us a like, subscribe, and share if you're checking this out on the YouTube. Anyways, what a week, man. What a week. All people can talk about is John Gruden right now. Yeah, man. The Gruden. Crazy. Right out of... I wasn't expecting that at all. Nah. We're cursed, man. The Raiders are just cursed. Man, I thought Gruden was going to be there for 10 years, man. He got that big contract. 10 years. Big money. Moving to Vegas. Yeah, this was his fourth year, I think. Team was on the rise. Yeah. This was year number four on his contract. So, I don't know, man. Shit's crazy. Cancel culture, man. It's a thing. Yeah, yeah, cancel culture. All this wokeness or fake wokeness, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. So, yeah, that's been a bitch, man. Um, Other than that, though, yeah, hanging in there. Playing that new Metroid game that came out. Yeah, I was going to ask. Did you pick that up then, huh? Yeah, picked That's it cool. up. Played for a few hours already. Um, nice. Yeah, it's like a survival horror game almost. Really? As close as it, Metroid can get. Yeah. You know? Like, there's no blood, but there's a lot of tension. It's like, damn, you're running from, like, this robot. Mm-hmm. And it sucks. Oh, that's cool, man. It's pretty dope, though. Hell Yeah. Sounds so, fun. Looks good, man. I was uh, I was interested in checking it out too. Yeah, people are like, is it really worth sixty bucks? Because it's a two D Metroidvania. I mean, even though Metroid is the author of all that, of all right. that genre, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't know if it's worth sixty bucks. But you know, Nintendo never drops their prices, so who cares? This ain't ever going on sale. <laughs> no, yeah. Good luck with that, right? Yeah. So. That's been cool, man. That's been cool. What about you, man? What's going on? Oh, man, not too much. Just uh, working and, you know, the usual. Still playing that Contra Returns on the iPad. Yeah. Got my controller hooked up to it, so. Is there, like, an ending to it? I haven't beat it yet, so I'm on stage 10. I just beat stage 10, but I need to be, like, level 65 or something to play 11, and I'm 60. But, like, I'm going through these guys like it's nothing, man. I can just plow through it, man. It's not a big deal. It's a dope game, then, huh? But, yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. Yeah. Probably the funnest, I don't know, I I would consider it a mobile game that I've ever played. So, a lot of uh, throwback shit to the old Contra games. Like, uh, yesterday I fought that, uh, remember that giant turtle boss and uh yeah the first boss in contra 3 hell yeah so he was the boss in uh, uh stage 10 so it was cool they all show a little like graphic of what he used to look like and then you know they obviously show what he looks like now but uh yeah man it's cool lots of nostalgia from sound effects to music to the bosses and all that stuff so a lot of fun man just been doing that uh little guy turned six months yep Congratulations. Uh, Little Rumble, six yeah, months man. old. But, uh, yeah, man, just grinding, man. Just keeping things moving. Trying to, you know, survive this COVID shit. Feels like everybody's getting the Rona. Yeah, you know, the yeah. whole world be trying to survive it. It's, it's like, a bitch. this is the closest I've ever felt to it, you know. Like, people that I know are getting it. People at work are getting it. It's just like, shit. Yeah. Hope I don't get it. I don't want to get it, but whatever. It's a bitch, man. But life goes on. I don't know anybody that's died from it, so that's a plus, you know. So oh, yeah, if for you sure. get it, you know, hopefully it's not a a bad a bad bout with it. 
All right, well, moving on then to a better time. Yeah. 2006 is when End of the World came out. Yeah, End of the World. I remember that. It was that. crazy. So, End of the World comes out and Mastermind is not on the project. Him and Isham had a, had a little beef there for a second or something. Yeah, so they started the recording process with... Um, what was the name of that track? Um, End of the World. End of the World? I think it was the yeah, title okay. track. So yeah. they did the title track, right? Yeah. So they, they did the title track, and then uh, there ended up being some differences or disagreements with the money. and Yeah. Uh, that He ended up not recording another song after that. So very disappointing you know in my opinion it was yeah. a bummer that he, he couldn't be a part of this album with uh you know because it's a it's a good effort man they had a lot of uh power behind this album you know a lot of uh the, the production was great the mastering was great the concept was great it's yeah too bad we couldn't get more mastermind on there mm -mm. do you remember the first time you heard the record or where you bought it um, I don't. I think I bought it online. I'm pretty sure I got it from acidrap.com. Really? I thought it was from... I I think I got it at... Is it Disc Jockey in Longmont? Disc 2006 Jockey. still? Were they still open? You know what? I don't know. I don't know, man. I lived in Aurora at the time. In 2006? Yep. Damn. Yeah. So I wasn't even in the Longmont area. Um, I think I picked it up there, uh, the physical CD. So I remember looking at it and seeing it. I was like, holy crap, here we are. Not a sin of the world. But we did have the physical CD. Yeah, actually, I, I, I'm quite sure I picked it up at uh, Disc Jockey in Longmont because at 2006 Angelo's was gone it was not there anymore right so this jockey was hanging on so even after they moved didn't they move who Angelo's well yeah they went from one location to another and they weren't around in, in 06 they were I don't think they were in Longmont anymore at mm. 06 see Angelo's was where we used to get all the yeah shit early and whatever they used to hook us up pretty good I think Angelo's was in uh, Aurora Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, they yeah. still got one out there, too. Damn. Okay. So, yeah, you know, and the artwork is funny because there's two versions. Right. And, uh, you know, we looked at both of them, and we kind of liked the one that was unreleased better because it had the pitchfork. But the Nodis name is a little small on there, so... Right, the image has the world in the middle with the mm -hmm. pitchfork going right through it and the giant N, and then it's got the... Uh, smaller Nodis logo up the top right yeah i don't remember what the did the physical cd look like like did was this on the back of the artwork i think it was like spacey it was like the space color yeah i don't remember if the the back of the cd you know the uh physical cd had that artwork included in it yeah i have a feeling it did yeah because it doesn't look it looks familiar you know mm -hmm. Uh, let me see what I can find here. Let me pull up the Google. Yeah. And we know that our homeboy, Des Saunders, actually did that artwork. Yeah. Or Eric Saunders. Eric, yep. I know him by Des. I see him on Facebook every now and then. I know he's alive. <laughs> what up, Des? What up, Des? Trolling the mo for life. For life. So, I thought the, the the sketches that they had inside too were pretty cool. Remember they had right. the yeah. There we go. See. Okay, so you're right. It was a little um, like outer spacey, but I don't see that the original graphic made it. Uh, Got a little see. rumble over there chiming in. Yeah. So this was a pretty thick booklet, from what I remember. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It had the track listing. The, uh, man, I had the three uh, drawings of the Nodis members who were looking like 
like soldiers or something, yeah, or like so zombies, like some zombies, sort. skeletons, some sort yeah. of dead figures. But yeah, Mastermind the Hellraiser, and it's got a couple of tracks on there. Yeah. And Isham the Unholy, aka Black Hitler. Yeah. TNT, the Dynamite Kid. That was pretty cool. cool. So the first time that we heard this record, like 2006, mm -hmm. uh, Isham was straight up, straight out of psychopathic at this point. Right. So that was kind of exciting, you know? Right, yeah. Like, that was a good, you know, good little piece of his career over there. He had a, some dope albums that he dropped. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was definitely dope. But I was ready to hear Isham without Violent J's direction you know right or his input um and it sounded like he was getting back to a darker tone anyways right right um they had help from shaheed on this one did he really yeah i was talking to shaheed and mastermind at the time what and, the, uh, yeah what'd they say well i just remember shaheed telling me about them getting back together and then uh yeah, after the split too, we talked for a little bit, but not that much. Mm. But uh, yeah, but yeah, it was interesting, man. I was working with Mastermind because he was doing stuff with like darker sound, and that was like Shahid shit. And uh, man, 2006, kind of hard to remember what Mastermind was doing back then. Um, but you know, still sending him music and shit like that. So I was still sending him beats and shit. I'd have to kind of see what I was doing in 2006 to see what he was working on. But either way, man, yeah, that was nuts. Uh, Shahid and Mastermind were working together. Then they linked up with uh, Isham and TNT, and I think um, it sounded like Shahid ended up working with Isham and T rather than uh, you know taking Mastermind's side. Hmm. Yeah. Mastermind, did Street Value come out during this or after? I think it was before. Before it? Yeah. Okay, so he was already like doing some solo shit. And I think, shit. yeah, he, so it was before he had done some solo shit. And I think this is right before he was going to go uh, work with Cutthroat. Yeah. So then the artwork, if we check out the artwork, uh, there's two versions of the cover. Right. There's one that was leaked anyways that um, Eric Saunders, a.k.a. Dez the Homie, worked on. Yo, yo, what up? What up, Dez? He uh, has the, I mean, the, he, he leaked out the, the original concept, which had the pitchfork going through the planet, which is pretty badass, actually. But... I guess they picked the other one. I'm guessing because the lettering is bigger and easier to read. You know, like Nodis is right. the end of the world. But, you know, having that pitchfork going through the planet was pretty dope um, on the other version. Um, inside the album cover, we have those uh, drawings too. I don't know who did the drawings. Was it Dead Boy? I don't, I don't, does Dead Boy draw? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Maybe it'll say in the credits. Yeah, uh, but we have these drawings of the three members of Nodis there, which are pretty cool. Um, you know, physic, the physical CD has all this crazy, like, outer space, like, vibe to it. Something like a World War Three vibe to it, I would say. And the, um... The, the drawings were by Michael Broom. Michael Broom, huh? Not sure who that is. Hmm. But yeah. And then, like, if you click on the back of the CD, you know, on the uh, computer there, Warlock Records was interesting to see that on there again. Yeah. Because the last time that he worked with Warlock was on Closed Casket. I don't remember Warlock doing anything else for Isham. He's got a lot of logos on there. He's got Warlock, Gotham, Real Life, uh, with the Devil in the Moon, and mm -hmm. then he's got the Acid Rap logo. He's got a lot and going on there. RLP World mm -hmm. logo with the lettering above or over the world. Yeah, he's got some uh, some old school logos there. The RLP 
that shit's straight out of dead flowers. Right. You know, that's crazy. So, artwork is pretty dope. Props to Dez on that shit. I know Dez is out there still haunting the internet every now and then. Um, since this was coming like right after his psychopathic era, era did you, what do you, I, I'm guess, I guess I'm wondering about expectations. Like I thought maybe he's going back to his dead flower days or his tongue, probably tongues is what I was thinking. Like he's gonna take it back to tongues yeah, um, I, I was kind of more www.com, you yeah. know, thinking something like, yeah, that. But to be honest, I mean, I've never really had an expectation for Esham's next album because they're always so different. The Nadis, the Esham's, they're all so different than the one before, so I, I've kind of stopped having expectations. Yeah, and the Nadis that came out before this was Godlike. Even though it's a great record, we know it was unfinished. And kind of released, you know, after the fact, after they yeah. had left, the, the label fell apart or unmastered. whatever happened. Yep. Yeah, unmastered and everything. So, you know, 2006, Nadis. So, yeah, this was official. So, before uh, Godlike was www.com, right? Yep, right before Godlike was .com. So, I would, you know, Godlike was dope, but I mean, <clears throat> It wasn't mastered and all, so I don't know. I guess we count it as an actual album, but this would be the next fully completed album, I guess. Yeah. All right, so we listened to the record. Easy listen from oh, yeah. start to end, but let's run it back track by track here. All right. You know, the intro, you know, subliminal disses maybe. Who knows why he chose this? Yeah, you know. they're talking about members three members and one goes astray and mm -hmm. you know so totally a subliminal jab in my opinion as well yeah so it is what it is it's an intro right once upon a time here so once upon a time yep upbeat yeah, aggressive it's a, it's a good way to start the album i feel you know I thought it was the perfect way to start the album. It kind of sets up what you're going to be listening to for the rest of the, the album. Pretty much is rock and roll. Most of it is mm -hmm. upbeat, just like this, too. Yeah, you know what you're getting into. Exactly. For sure. I think both of their verses were pretty hard. They right. started the record off hard. Yep. It was great to hear that Isham and TNT were back. Right. You know? Yeah. And they weren't just like kind of back, but they were coming out hard back. Hearing this for the first time, it was very shocking to hear it. This, I mean, for 2006, mm -hmm. this is something we never heard from them. You got the guitar, the verses are on point, TNT's on point. Everything's great for the album so yeah, far. Yeah, so far. And this is just the first track, but right. it gives you the gist of the, the rest of it almost. Expectations you know? like are you know, high, high, right, high now. right now. Yep. <laughs> So then the next track here, Dead Men Don't Sing. Man, I love the way it starts. Yep. So come down a little bit with the energy. Mm -hmm. Dead Men Don't Sing, pretty smooth track. I think um, it's a great second track. Right. I think, I think this formula is pretty much what a lot of artists do. So start yeah. off aggressive, bring it down a little bit, and then mm -hmm. just build it back up. Yeah. It's a... Uh, you know the sampling is i'm not sure what he's where he's getting all the the samples from but it's working out pretty well so dead men don't sing yeah i like it i give it a thumbs up i like the name of the track and the hook yeah dead men don't sing they got a history of using that right so i like the horns and the hook yeah, the transition. A little singing there. Mm -hmm. And we get a lot of that with these Nodis tracks where like you change to the hook. It's almost like a, a break and then you come back to the track. And That's then true. here you notice the beat changes again. It'll oh, come yeah. back. It does uh, switch back when yeah. TNT starts rapping on mm -hmm. it. So I don't know. I see no I see no wrong here. It's a great second track. Yep. So far so good, man. Next track, Worlds Apart. So yeah, this one's fun. This one's fun. Love stories, 
always mm-hmm. good to hear. Um, you know, Isham and TNT have a interesting view on it, so I love yeah. hearing it. Yeah, they're uh, they're a couple of jokers when it comes to love, isn't oh, yeah. it? Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, Worlds Apart's awesome. TNT delivered on it. Yeah, I like the guitar riff here, and I like how it gets even more aggressive uh-huh. on the hook. It does get farther aggressive, man. But, you know, you got Isham throwing in his personality in it. And TNT throws in his personality into it, yeah. too. Like, these guys are not on a winning streak when it comes to relationships. Right, right. Because, you know, the songs in the past that we've heard, you know, and everything they talk about. Yeah. It's perfect, man. It's like, that's Isham and T, you know. Typical. You know, and just bitches. what you would expect to hear just on a... A different type of beat than what we're normally used to. Yeah. This is almost like heavy metal here. Yeah, it does get to like that heavy metal screaming almost for a while. Mm-hmm. But then it comes right back yeah. to the rap like that, you know. It's crazy. But it doesn't sound quick. abrupt. No. It still makes sense. It blends. Yeah. And it's not forced. I like the track. I uh, give it a thumbs up. So far, so good, man. So far... They're, they have a classic brewing. Long as I live. Next track. Oh, man. I love the way this track starts. Dun, 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 dun. It's just a smooth track. It's slowing down again, you know? Yeah, it's slowing so down. They went up, down, up, down so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. That's crazy. What would it be like? Isham's flow on here just shows that he's mastered it by now, you know? Like, I don't know how many times I've said that when I've heard him. Mm. Obviously, he's mastered it a long time ago. The drums have a lot of... uh, What's the word I'm looking here for? The drums are a little more complex. So you have more bass drum than you normally would on a normal drum drum line. So the way he can flow over that, uh, it just, it makes it sound a lot better. I probably didn't explain that as well as I possibly could, but uh, the more complex the drums, you know, and that's what they have here. He was able to match it up perfectly with the with the verse. And how about the sampling in the hook? Oh yeah, yeah. like what is where, where did that come from? Those yeah, vocals. Yeah, I don't know, but you know, Isham watching late night television. Who knows, man? I don't know where he gets. <laughs> shitty samples I mean, maybe it's shit crazy. he grew up watching I'm, i mean i have no idea i think this is a great not as track um or you know a duo track from e and e and t yeah they got a classic on this one you know i like it yeah another track about death they they've oh, done yeah, many right. but you know this one they've this done a thousand good. tracks about right. death. you know this one hits different I don't know why. Maybe it's modernized. And this, this isn't rock and roll laced like the other ones are. You know, mm-hmm. this one kind of steps back from that rock theme. Yeah. So. This one's more almost R&B, maybe soul, jazz. I don't know. It's old school sounding. It's got a it's lot hip-hop. of elements to it. Yeah. It's just hip hop, man. Good track. I approve. Next track, Pancakes Word. and Syrup. Okay, now we're getting into the scissor. Yeah. World things slow down. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean, it's like, a, and that's south. It's totally and what shit. it's all about. The pancakes, pancakes and syrup. Talking about scissor and yeah. I mean, I've never done it before, but they say it slows everything down. Yeah. But uh, this track, I like the beat, man, and I love the hook. I'm just not a big fan of the verses. Yeah. I used to hate this song, but it grew on me. Yeah. And I stopped skipping it, and now it's just... I gotta be honest, man. I didn't like it at first. Right. And now I don't even notice it, you know, when I play the record. And the hook is catchy. Yeah, the hook is very catchy. Um, If I'm making pancakes, I'm definitely singing this song. You know, Isham's verse like this, I don't know. It's not that great. TNT kind of makes up for it a little bit. I like his verse on here, even though his voice is kind of fucked. Because right. his voice, the way he flows 
kind of caters to it because he likes to stretch out his words. Right. And I'm only assuming that that is TNT because I've never, you know, sped it up to right. really know. But based off of the lyrics, it's like, that's TNT. His cadence a little bit. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Like this one, this the first one is definitely Isham on there. The second one is TNT. Yeah. It's an interesting track. So. Yeah. I mean, with the... With the verses, I'm not a big fan of how they slowed it down. Like I would yeah. have liked to have heard normal speed. I mean, I think no, I agree with maybe, you. Maybe it would have been better if they just left their voices maybe alone. Maybe I gotta on be it. on Scissor to fucking appreciate this shit. I don't know. Oh yeah, I mean, they mean it's a million dollar industry. Chopped right. and screwed. Yeah, exactly. So I never understood the chop and screwed. I'm not into the chop and screwed, but yeah, um, yeah. This this is probably. I still skip it, you know, but mm -hmm. I, I, I'll give the song props for its creativeness. The beat's on point. The hook's on point. Uh, but for me, I would have rather had the vocals just be normal speed. I feel ya. I feel ya. All right. Full of hate. Picking it back up. The energy. Yeah, getting it's getting wicked darker. again, man. Yep. So this one, they get really dark. Um... TNT starts it, but you know, Isham. One second. I used to be so cold. You want to start that one up. So we got full of hate. Track starts off with TNT. Yeah. The energy is back to that wicked shit. Isham spits hard on it. Right. This is one of his more arrogant verses on the CD, I feel like. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. It's it's aggressive. And they're playing with the pitch again, like they did on Pancake and Syrup, only it's just really subtle and in the background. Yeah. I don't know it's if that was coincidence or on purpose, but... Uh, yeah, I, I like the way they did it on this track, because it's... You hear the, the regular speed, that's definitely dominant. You actually have to try to hear the other shit. Yeah, it is cool when you can sit down and, like, if you really listen to it, you hear all kinds of weird shit like that. Mm -hmm. So it's dope. I think it fits right into the record, though. It's dope. Yeah, it's good. Next track here, Nightmares. Starts off smooth. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's a smooth track, even though it's about, you know, some wicked shit. But it's a very political track from Isham. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it because Isham doesn't get, like, I don't know, too caring about his politics, usually. I mean, he did say fuck Bush here and there, but who doesn't, you know, whatever. Right. Everybody says fuck the president. That's right. But this one isn't like straight out fuck the president. It's just like how the wicked shit is in politics and yeah. life and shit. Well, it's subtle. He's never really been in your face with his views. Yeah. Um, and that's appreciative. You know, if you want to take a message out of it, you still can. But the way he does it is, is, is subtle. But uh, the beat's pretty smooth here. Digging the bass line, the synthesizer. Yeah. I think the hook and is the pretty hook cool. Is nice too, yeah. And they yep. got all kinds of like, you got the harp going and the atmospherical sounds and mm -hmm. all kinds of cool stuff going on in this track. Yeah, some weird samples back Makes there. Makes me feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dope. Then, yeah, the singing that Isham does on here you know he does it in a few tracks but i feel like his singing might be pretty good on this record yeah versus some of his other records where he just kind of does it but uh yeah him and tnt put out another thumbs up track for me man. yep good track all right next track on my own kind of a positive upbeat track and we were th talking about it like if you took out the verses would it still be rap I don't yeah. Know. See that I don't know. I mean, the drums would lead you to believe it's a rap song, but yeah, 
the strings and everything else with it. I don't know how I would peg this genre of music exactly, but it's different than everything else that's on here. Yeah, interesting. Maybe this was a track that he brought back. I think that the track time. Oh, like before? Right. Maybe because it's a it's solo, a solo track. Yeah. Like when you listen to the hook, I could sense some of that younger Isham in there, but how much younger? I don't know. Hard to put it on yeah. a timetable, you know. Like yeah, it's it's hard to say, but just if yeah, I don't know. Does it sound like you know uh, psychopathic Isham? Yeah. Either way, you know, I think the the track kind of slows things down a little bit, yeah. but it kind of gives it room to breathe. It's like a bridge track. It's cool. It's not exhausting yet, you know. No, it kind of breaks it up, you yeah. know, in a way. You, it's almost like a, I don't know, an interlude yeah. to the to the final final act. Yeah, I think you're right, man. All right, next track here: Trouble and Pain. So this track is kind of slow too, actually, but you know, it does have some features on it. Mo Battis, um, Doc Hollywood Hustle. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, there's no TNT on here. I don't know right. why. Yeah, I, I don't know either. I don't know why. Um, you know, the beat's not the best one on the record either, tell you the truth. It's okay, you know? It's, it's okay. Maybe it's a filler track. Yeah. Or maybe... It's just not my favorite. Tro yeah, Trouble and Pain, not my favorite track on the album. I don't even really listen to it when I'm peeping out the album. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I dig the beat and everything, but I just don't think, for me, Mo Battis and, and Doc Hollywood Hustle didn't quite deliver like I was hoping. Hmm. No, I think you're right. A lot of potential, but it didn't reach what they could have right just kind of missed the mark and we know Mo Battis and Isham can tear it up you know but for whatever reason it just didn't didn't hit right on, on yeah. this track yeah I mean I don't dislike the track honestly I don't skip it but um I know it's not my favorite and I'm kind of mad there's no TNT on it because that would have yeah. been dope you remember the old days Bruce Wayne right. when they were all just fucking yeah. doing TNT, it man? Isham and Mo Battis had yeah. a track on Bruce Wayne yeah, dude. It was cool. So, yeah. Cool to hear Mo Battis again, though, but... Yeah, yeah I, I dig that. I mean, it was cool to hear him, but... I mean, I don't know. The verse just didn't hit. Next track, then, the title track, End of the World. Yep, yep. Starts off really dope, man. The only Nottis track on here. True! No the offense. only real Nottis track With on here. all due respect, Mr. Yeah. Isham. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this is the only not his track on this album. Um, yeah, so this was the, the lead single. It's the first track that they released. Yeah, came out uh, a few months before the album, I yeah. think. You got a little bit of guitar. It's not rock heavy like the rest or most of the rest of the album. Right. But, uh, but it's good, man. It's cool. I dig it. Yeah, it's a cool track. They all get to rap on it. Isham actually gets on here twice. Which yeah, is Isham's uh, amazing. got two verses on here. So it's a four-verse song, which mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever gotten that from an RLP yeah. Isham or Nottis album. The bummer part about it is the diss at the end. You know, they stick yeah. Mastermind with the... See, so, yeah, and that's dirty, man. That's just dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. I wish the beef didn't play out on the album, you know? Like, I get it. You and Mastermind didn't see eye to eye. Yeah, and, yeah. You, you're Back not in 2006, work on the project, like but, 15 like, years ago. You don't need to air it out on the album, and then adding that skit to the end of the song. Maybe oh, if they dirty. had Facebook back then, they wouldn't have aired it on the CD. Right. But you know, hindsight is 2020. You know, and I think it's mm -hmm. just that we know these guys a little better than we do everybody else that we're reviewing on here yeah for sure so you know it's not exactly family but it's like you know these guys ah, see we like, got t-shirts man oh yeah Set. boom boom mastermind but uh 
Yeah, man. Dope track, nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> I totally forgot they stuck. I know I heard the skit, but I forgot that it was attached to the track. It's attached to the track, man. They put Mastermind on the track, and then they diss him at the end. Yep. It's dirty. It's dirty, man. <laughs> I gave you a 10 for that track. Now it's a 9. Now it's a 9. <laughs> but it was dope to finally hear some Mastermind with yeah. these guys back then you know it had been a while but it and it was a while till we got uh fuck everybody yeah you know and that one hardly had tea on it so yeah opportunity and time just fucking we all lost in this beef you know? yeah we did unfortunately we did man and i mean they tried to make it happen with end of the world or uh fuck everybody mm -hmm. fuck everybody to me is almost like a godlike album you know was Mm -hmm. Two different versions. Some it of the was, tracks were unmastered. And T wasn't around. T wasn't around. You know, it was, he was in Vegas. It was almost patched together, but yeah, it's all good. Take whatever we can get. All right. See you in hell. Next track then. Ah, this one, they both come aggressive. Yeah, I love this track. Yeah, this one is it's hype. It's real hype, man. Um... And I don't know what sample they use, but the horns, whatever it is, man, the, the hits, the horns, the samples, all of it's dope. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know what sample he's using, but uh, Isham is a master sampler. We know this to be true. Yeah. Um, him and TNT come correct, man. I love TNT's verse on here, man. It's a great way to finish the record off. Yeah. Or I think, or the track off. I mean, he's the last verse on here. Isham starts two, then TNT gets yeah. one. And what you what you hear with the voices in the back, how they're doing like two channels or something, right. is dope. You know. Anyways, I give it a thumbs up. Dope track. Are you talking about the ad libs in the background? Yeah, I can hear it. Can you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's dope. Mm -hmm. There's more to this, the, these tracks than meets the ear of, at first. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about 15 years later, you know, I'm yeah. like listening closer and hearing things that I never heard before, you know. It's cool. The, the track, it, it helps make the CD timeless, you know. Oh, yeah. It's dope. Next track, The Question Mark which is a club evil song, whatever yeah. that means. Whatever I mean, that means, it's supposed yeah. to be a club evil CD so, on Psychopathic. Some speculation that this could have been from a previous era. And it's a mystery because Isham, it's a solo track, so it, yeah. could, it could be anything. It could you know? be anything. And, you know, I think we were talking about that on On My Own. Maybe it is from another era. Who knows? Yeah. I just know that it's mastered different. You got mm -hmm. the bass distortion going. And I feel like it's even a little bit lower in volume than the rest. It kind of is, huh? It's definitely yeah. not mastered as well. Right. But dope track, nonetheless. Yeah. Next track, Crazy Town. A TNT solo. Yeah. A rarity. Yep. You don't get very many of these. Uh-uh. But yeah, I love the beat that they chose. Crazy Town. Yeah. Good theme, TMT, uh, he did it, man. He nailed it. He's got a 10 right here. Yeah, I feel like we never get enough TNT spotlight, you know? Like, right. he never gets a chance. He does, but we don't get enough of it, you know? Right. We all miss, we all missed out on a TNT solo, yep. sadly. He just falls under the category of the, they're like the, the, those, Awesome quarterbacks that never get a Super Bowl, you know? Yeah, Dan Marino. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, we got TNT who just never got an album, yeah. you know? Yeah. There's a lot of rappers like that. You Dan know, Marino, Warren Moon, something like that. Yeah, some shit like that. Like, We'll go with Warren Moon. He just goes under that category, man. Philip Rivers. Yeah. Uh, I should be thinking rappers instead of quarterbacks here, but TNT's a prime example of somebody who never got a solo album we probably should have, you know. But, yeah. Great track. I give it a thumbs up. Hell yeah. Nigga's always talking a lot of shit. Oh, this yeah. one's cool, man. It's smooth. 
it kind of brings the album back to something easier, you know, a little softer. Yeah. And they're doing this with their voice for some reason. Yeah, they're just kind of talking real low. Nick is always talking Nick a lot of shit. Nick is always talking a lot of shit. They don't want to say it too loud. They're like watching their back and rapping. Right. The chicks, <laughs> their mom's in the next room type I dig of it. flow. Yeah, well, it's like maybe because they're kind of talking shit, you know, and they don't want people to hear them talking shit. Yeah, they got to be on the low. <laughs> Nigga's always talking shit. So, you know, keep your voice down. I like the song, though. It's yeah, fun. It's I dope. like the way they do that with their voice. Um, we even get a UNHOLY in there. Oh, yeah. Bonus, Ishan. Yeah, great track. Barry Smooth. Sander I reference. Got a little football reference. and It's a good old Detroit Ishan hit, you know. Whatever so, track this is, I want to know what the original is. I'm going to have to look it up. What try the, to figure it out. Want to get where that flute comes from? Yeah. Well, the whole... So when I heard the, the track on the Many Saints of Newark, yeah, it sounded almost just like this beat. Very, very similar. You probably so have much to, so that I almost started singing the hook. You might have to check it out. Check out the credits yeah. on that. Maybe hey, they if they're the using soundtrack. it now... It's a timeless track. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, Ishan borrowed from it to get it, but good. It's dope. Sweet track. Thumbs up. Final track, then. Why You Gotta Lie? Apparently, Ishan might have borrowed this from Metallica, but oh. I like to say Metallica borrowed from Ishan. Ah, okay. You mean <laughs> Metallica didn't bite Ishan here? I keep hearing that on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way the track starts. I'm sick as fuck. Yeah. You know, whatever, you know. 50 bucks. Pick it up. I like how he's doing that with his voice. Yeah. It's pretty dope. He's just bitch slapping on this track yeah, he's pretty much. fun with it too, mm -hmm. man. He's like, this is not a serious flow. This is just a fun flow. Yeah. And I mean, TNT is the same way on it too. Yeah. You know, they let TNT, when he gets to go nuts on a track, he obviously often will start just talking weird shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you, motherfucker, whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, okay, it doesn't even rhyme or nothing. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so this one's got some comedy in it, which is fun. It does, you know? it does. They, uh, you know, they got the little guy getting choked. Right. You know, got some talk show host shit in there. <laughs> Alex Trebek. Yeah. Google search your fingers. That's right. Google search your fingers, man. TNT's flow is dope on here, man. Hey, I can't complain about it. I think it's a great way to end the record off, man. So, yeah. Ending it off on a really, really upbeat track. Yeah. You don't get that a lot, but I do like it when they I do like that. it. I like the way it ends. It's on it almost wants you almost want more. Well, like another track maybe. I think doing this almost makes you like shit, should I hear it again? Mm -hmm. Fuck it. I'm gonna go ahead and listen spin to the it record one more again. Time. Yep. I think you're right. It does kind of give it that loop feel. Right. And I think because every track kind of intertwined with each other, it sounds like it's just one long oh, yeah. song, you know. And you got it in your CD deck in your car. It is going to loop anyways, you know. Yeah. So. Hearing it one more time, I'm probably guilty of that. Oh, yeah. You know. I've, I've definitely been guilty of that. Yeah. Anyways. Good shit. It's good shit, man. Um, that's, that's it, man. That's all them good tracks and shit. Hell, yeah. That was like an hour long of a record. 58 minutes and 28 seconds for that album. Good but, shit. Uh, 16 tracks, which is kind of on the low end for uh, Isham and Nadis, but Yeah, but the tracks la are like four minutes and like they're actual yeah. real tracks and mm -hmm. not like one minute things right. that Isham does. Right. You know? That's when you get the 20 plus track listing. Yeah, so, I mean, what do you think about the track flow, you know? Um, you know, track flow was good. I feel like, let me see, I was taking notes of that. Yeah. Um, we have, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight upbeat tracks, you know? So mm -hmm. about half the album, you know, it feels upbeat. It feels, um, you know, it's one of the more upbeat albums you would hear. 
uh, in general in rap. But uh, you know, I like it. Um, the The flow was seamless. There wasn't really. I mean, I know I said I'd skip a couple tracks on here, but I mean, everything just flows together. Yeah. Uh, I think that the placement of the tracks was pretty good. Yeah. Um, the question mark track, uh, it wasn't as mastered or wasn't as clean as everything else because right. who knows where it's supposed to even come from. But um, I thought that the placement, at least, of every track was yeah. good. Was the good track the way placement was on point. I wouldn't yeah. even know how to do it any better, to tell you the no, truth. No, and like we were saying, that it sounds like a CD you could maybe loop yeah over and over you know and not notice i mean what i'm saying like that last track is like it's over it's cool it's a great way to end it but i kind of feel like it hearing it again wanting more you know? though like, yeah exactly so yeah I, I like the the placement of the tracks it sounds um intentional and it goes up and down and up and down in the yeah. beginning and then it goes hard but he still kind of smooths it out you know it doesn't get tiring i don't think i get tired um, or exhausted by the end. There's yeah. tracks that aren't my favorite, right. but I don't feel exhausted yet. So, um, what do you think are the? What are your three favorites on here? Ooh, my three favorites. Okay, well, um, yeah, we need a... three favorites, and then we need the crown jewel. Okay, the crown jewel. Damn. Well, I'm gonna give so a total of four tracks. Does it have to be no? two tracks and then the crown jewel? Just give us. Give us your three favorites, and then from there you gotta give your favorite favorite. All right, cool, cool. So, Boom. Once upon a time, and I'm just gonna go down the track list and pick them. So in no particular order. Once upon a time, um, see you in hell and crazy town. Those are gonna be my three, and with the crown jewel being crazy town. Damn. Nice. Nice. Well, my three, I got Dead Men Don't Sing. Okay, yeah. Long As I Live. And Why You Gotta Lie. Nice. I think my crown jewel is probably Dead Men Don't Sing. Fuck it. Nice. I really think that's, I think of that track when I see the CD, pretty much. Oh, okay. It's a dope. I love I love the sampling on it. Whatever. There's a lot of tracks on here I could have picked. You know. Yeah, I had I put a star next to Crazy Town, but I thought well, I'm gonna be a little different. Damn it! But There's, I love Crazy Town too. I you know I I was ranking these and I have a lot of tens on my list on this album. You know more than usual. Um. So yeah, big props, man. There's. Gosh, what do I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have nine tens on there. Wow. That's dope. What do you give the album overall? What's your overall score? Overall, well, so... This is a tough one for me. Uh, pancakes and Syrup and Trouble and Pain. You know, I, uh, I gave those sevens. Um... I'm torn on this being a Nodis album, and I don't want to take away from it just True. because of the beef, you know? True. Um, so I'm not really going to go there. I, I, I wish that it was all three members, but yeah. I'm just going to judge it on the musical content because I don't want to let my personal feelings get involved with it. So, you know, I'm going to give this shit a solid nine. Um, Pancakes and Syrup and um, Trouble and Pain, those two tracks I don't really care for. Um, if we had one great track to replace those two, or maybe those two weren't in it at all. True. Um, I think you would have had a flawless album here. You could have, yeah. No, I agree. I think if you didn't have those tracks, it would have been a 10. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to give it 9.5. Nice. I like the record. I know it's not perfect though, so I can't give it a 10. Yeah. But I don't really skip anything on there, even though I know that um, one of the songs or a couple aren't like my favorites. Yeah. I listen to it from beginning to end, um, but I can still recognize 
just because I can hear it from beginning to end doesn't mean I think it's a classic. Right. Either, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it nine and a half, though. Nine and a half Black Hitlers. Boom. Nice. Boom. Some Black Hitlers up in there. Hell yeah. So, shit, yeah, man. Dope record. Fucking A, hell yeah. That check it out on Spotify, record. man. You guys, if you haven't heard it, you check it out. It's dope. So. Bump it, yeah. Now you've heard it. Go listen to it without us talking over it. Mm-hmm. It's fucking dope. It's a great album. And this leads us to our segue of what we're going to do next, which is actually pretty similar to this record. Yeah. You know, the next record we're going to do is NWA, Niggas for Life. Yep. Without Ice Cube. Without Ice Cube, yeah. Crazy. So, yeah, the second and final NWA mm-hmm. record. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be exciting, man. So, any final thoughts here? Um, you know, I would love to see Esham and Mastermind get together and do an album. Hell yeah. I don't know what the relationship is like nowadays, but I know they're cool. You know, they're musically, cool. I don't know how much they care to work with each other or not. Um, yeah, they're both you know, busy as hell. It's, yeah. You know, I haven't know. really been in the loop too much, but it sounds like... You know, Esham's doing his own thing, and Mastermind's got his stuff going on. Yeah, man. You know, Just dropped Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. So, you know, it'd be cool to see him link up, even if it wasn't a full album. Hit us with an EP, man. Hit yeah. us with five, six, you know, five, six tracks, something like that. Um, doesn't have to be Nodis. Could be whatever you guys want, man. I, I agree. I think a duo album from Esham and Mastermind. Yeah would be hot kind of like that last track they threw up on toxic avenger with esham and mastermind you know i forget the name of that track but uh mm murder or something like that yeah there you go something like that esham on that crazy beat man yeah um yep so i know the chemistry's there man they work well together Mm -hmm. um it would be awesome the fans would love it i would love it yes um i agree so I, I don't ever want to hear these guys stop making music. So I just hope they can collaborate more. Yeah. Um, and then pull some TNT stuff out of the vault, man. You know, like mm-hmm. time is limited on this earth, man. And it's just, you know, can't sit on stuff forever if you want it to see the light of day. Just Bring something it out. to think about, man. Just, I, I don't know. It's you, Ishan. We're talking to you, Let, let's, brother. Let's get it, man. Let's, let's hear some it. TNT. Let's not wait till it's too late. Um, this world's getting crazy. Don't get canceled. <laughs> Don't get canceled. <laughs> but uh, you know what? My final thoughts are uh, just keep making music, man. I can't wait to hear the PsyOps. Ultimate Warrior was dope. And I just hope that uh, these two members just keep on making music. Hell yeah. Well, that'll do it for us, man. Commercial. Check us out, rapthrowback.com. Leave us a voicemail. We'll put you on the podcast. Hell yeah. Our next podcast, we're going to be doing NWA, Niggas for Life. Check it out. Um, yeah, that's our next shit. Hell yeah. Shh. Follow us on the YouTube. Subscribe to our podcast. We're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever. We out this bitch, man. Peace. Peace.